let's look at orthogonal frequency division multiplexing and see how it relates to the discrete Fourier transform and really understand the power of um, the DFT to deliver this new modulation scheme that's in all of our mobile phones, OFDM. So here's a standard communication system for amplitude shift keying. Uh, we have X going into our signal waveform, and this is S of T. Uh, and this waveform, for example, is uh, you're going to turn it on at time zero, and it's, so this is the impulse response. You turn it on at time zero, it has a sinusoidal shape, and then you turn it off at time T. So for a period of T, we're going to be sending a either X will be either a 1 or a minus 1, for example, um, at 1 or minus 1. That's uh, how you send binary digital data. You either turn this on positive or you turn this on negative. That's one example. Let's consider that one. And we put that into a channel uh, and then the matched filter can be implemented, which is the optimal thing to do for additive white Gaussian noise channel. Uh, you multiply by the same signal waveform shape um, in this case, because this is a cos waveform, uh, you actually multiply by the complex conjugate, but this is a real waveform as cos, so we multiply by the same waveform and we add up the energy and then sample at time capital T. Okay, and then of course capital 2T and 3T and 4T and 5T and so on for all of the digital data. So this is the standard uh, communication system. Now, how do we implement this? Well, we would need oscillators at the transmitter, which are analog electronics. We would need an oscillator at the receiver, uh, a multiplexer, a, a multiplier at the receiver, and an in integrator filter at the receiver, all analog electronics, and then a analog to digital converter with a sampler. So this is what we would need to implement this in a standard single channel uh, system. Let's think about what we might do to try to add another parallel orthogonal channel to this. Uh, and if we pick a waveform which is orthogonal to the first waveform, and uh, if you want to know more about this, I've just uh, posted a video on orthogonality of waveforms, and you can find the link in the description below. Uh, and also at the end of this video, uh, there will be a, uh, a link to that video. And if we pick this one, for example, at twice that frequency, then it's going to be orthogonal. Um, and so let's call this uh, channel 1 up here, signal 1, this is signal 1, uh, and so this is X2, uh, the second channel, this is the second signal, S2, T, uh, and it's going to go into this channel uh, added to the first channel, uh, the first signal. And we're going to send them, we add them together and we send them over the same channel. And then at the receiver, we need to, we put the signal into this wave, uh, this sequence here, this uh, circuit tree here. And because these two signals are orthogonal to each other, when they multiply together and go through this integrator, the effect of X2 will not be seen at the output over here. Uh, and likewise, this one here is multiplying by S2T and the effect of S1, of X1, the digital data from X1, coming through multiplying S1 times S2, because they're orthogonal, when they get multiplied and integrated, the effect from S1 will be, or X and X1, will be invisible at this output here, because they're orthogonal. So what do we mean by that? I'll just write down just a little bit of uh, mathematics just to show you what's going on here. The signal now, if we call this signal here X of T, the transmitted signal X of T, so X of T uh, is going to eat, well, just before I do that, uh, let me write down what's happening over here um, at this receiver, for example, just to sh demonstrate to you that it's orthogonal. Let me try that, do that first. Okay, so over here, what's going to be coming over here? Well, the input signal is x of 1 times s1 of t plus x of 2, that's the digital data for the second data stream, times s2 of t, uh, that's the transmitted signal. And let's assume just for this mass that the channel is just a adding, uh, multiplying by 1, it's got a unit gain, and let's say there's no noise, just for example, then that's the signal here. Uh, that signal is going to go 
let's look at what comes out of this channel here. So it's being multiplied by S1 of t, and it's being integrated from 0 to t, and then it's being sampled at time capital T. So what do we have here? Well, here we're going to have S1t times S1t. So we're going to have x1 out the front of the integral of S1 squared t. And then the x2, we're going to have S2 times S1. And the S2 times S1, when they're integrated, because they are orthogonal, uh, and again, for more information on this, there's a video on orthogonality of functions, because they're orthogonal over the period of 0 to capital T, then the effect of those is going to add 0 into this, uh, into this integral here. So uh, that's, that term disappears and, and equals 0. Okay, so what we're going to get, therefore it's not there. So at the output, this output out here, we will have x1, which will be the plus 1 or minus 1, that's our digital data, times the energy that was received from signal 1 through the match filter signal 1. So this will be an amount of energy multiplied by the plus 1 or minus 1, which will tell us whether it was the digital data at the input was plus 1 or minus 1. So out of here, we can detect the digital data that was in x1, and we don't see any effect from x2, and vice versa over here. So let's take this uh, equation here and let's look, explore this equation. Maybe let's write that out if we had more inputs in here. We don't just have to limit ourselves to two orthogonal functions. If we make this uh, three times the original, four times the original frequency, five times the original frequency, and so on, they're all going to be orthogonal. And so the general form is that xt will be equal to the summation, because we're summing them, of xk from k equals, let's start at the count at 0, uh, to n minus 1, of these sinusoids. And the sinusoids are written e in complex form, e to the 2 pi k on capital T times time. Uh, and I've only drawn here the cos waveforms. But of course, we could also, on every channel, we could send a sine waveform, which would also be at the same frequency and also orthogonal. Uh, and so the sinusoid uh, is uh, contained in this part of the equation here as well. So this e to the j 2 pi k on tt, as we know, this equals cos of that plus j sine of that. So there's a cos waveform, which I've drawn, plus a sine waveform, which I haven't drawn, but this equation includes that. Okay, so this is by picking that frequency very carefully to be integer multiples, that's the K, integer multiples of 1 on capital T. That means that they will be orthogonal. It means that there will be no effect from the other channels on each of the channels that you have an interest. So each channel can be transmitted orthogonal to the other channels. And what do we notice when we write this down? It's just a, a, a mathematical expression of this, exactly what we've done. We talked about this in terms of analog electronics to implement each of these blocks, but now we can see this is exactly the discrete Fourier transform equation. And so instead of doing analog electronics for these filters and for this additional uh, adding component, which would otherwise require analog electronics, and for each of these multipliers and each of these oscillators and each of these integrators, instead of requiring analog electronics for all of this, we can replace all of this, because this is the input sequence xt, to generate xt, we can replace all of this by simply, a, and sorry, this is the inverse discrete Fourier transform, by simply an inverse discrete Fourier transform. And then we can view these, uh, x1, x2, x up to xn minus 1, as being, I mean, they are the digital data, but we can view them as being the frequency domain components of our signal xt, which we're going to send over the channel. And so an alternate way of implementing this is to implement uh, x, uh, have x0 to xn minus 1 uh, going into, each one of those going into an inverse discrete Fourier transform, which then goes into a parallel to serial converter, which then goes into the channel. And then at the output, 
where you just have the serial to parallel and going into a discrete Fourier transform uh, to give us back our output, each of our output streams, each of these output streams over here. So all of the analog electronics here can be replaced by digital computations of inverse discrete Fourier transforms and discrete Fourier transforms. And these computations can be done extremely fast on modern uh, ASIC chips, which are OFDM chips. So this is the power of the OFDM. Not only are you able to get all of these channels closely packed together because of the clever way of choosing orthogonal waveforms, but you're able to implement it in digital form very, very efficiently with a DFT and an IDFT digital uh, electronics. Uh, and that's, uh, that's the double uh, power of, uh, of OFDM. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos. Check out the links to the other recent videos on orthogonal basis functions and the choice of uh, basis functions for OFDM, uh, which are in the links below the video and also at the end, uh, clickable links at the end of the video. And like the channel, uh, like the video, uh, it helps to get the word out to other people who can find uh, this information, find the video.